I really want to dive into that too. And I mean, I understand exactly how you mean my online business manager I stole from Willie Nelson. Like she used to do his social media and stuff. I was like, why would you want to work from, okay. <laughs> it was work from home. It was the freedom. She can go travel and be here. You know, she's local here in Austin, but still we only work together like once a week. And it's sort of yeah. one of those things where I'm like, okay, cool. Glad that worked because I'm pretty <laughs> sure I'm paying her less too. I was like, um, but she still said yes because freedom was extremely important. It's amazing to sort of see that. So yeah. how did you start growing your team? Like when, because you said you started LKR social media in 2009. Yeah. So give me the life cycle of your team too because a lot of people start as solopreneurs and don't know how to do this. But like you said, you can't be successful or truly successful without a team. Yeah. So I definitely started earlier than a lot of people do. I mean, I was, I had a few hires by the end of 2009, but hired does not mean full-time salaried 401k. Uh, and I think that's really important to point out for a bootstrap business. Bootstrap businesses hire very differently because you don't, no one gave you a check for $5 million. So you can't go out and hire 10 people full-time with benefits and stuff. It is very, very expensive. And I think actually that's why a lot of people are scared to hire. They think that hiring means I'm going to pay someone $80,000 a year and have to set up their health insurance and stuff. It doesn't. You start getting help in with freelancers, you know, with part-time, with hourly. Um, you use that to grow your business. And then you get to a point where you are able to have full-time, where you are able to provide benefits and stuff like that. But a lot of people are confused about that. It is it is a process that you have to stair step if you're bootstrapped because you know you're generating the money that's building the business. How do you know when is the right time to hire though too? Oh like always. <laughs> I think mean, because I don't know, like I literally don't think I've ever come across anyone that's hired too early. It's always too late because once people bring someone in, they're like, like this, like I'm not sure what they would do. Like there's plenty for them to do. I promise you. Once you have someone and you need stuff to assign to them, you will find stuff for them to do. I think the big mistake I see people making is way too much coaching and consulting mm -hmm. and not enough hiring. It's crazy to me how many people will pay fifty thousand dollars for coaching and mentoring and say, Oh, I can't afford you know, I can't afford anyone. I'm like, you can, you can get some great freelancers for a lot less than $50,000. And, you know, that's not to negate the importance of coaching and consulting. I think those things are, are great too, but don't spend your money just on that and like not be willing to spend money to get anything done. Mm, there's huge value in having someone else do something for you. Yes. <laughs> like, <laughs> like all these ideas that the coaches and consultants are giving exactly. you like, need to happen. Like I can't do them right now. I don't have a big enough team. Wait, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Great. That was a waste of 50 grand. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> so funny how yeah, it's but, such a mindset thing with newer entrepreneurs in general. Um, but it's a scary thing to be responsible or even if it's only a few hours a week of going, okay, what if they don't do it right what it, and then I have to manage them and I'm probably pretty bad at that and so how did you start learning actually yeah. first of all how many people are on your team and then how did you start learning to really work with them so that they were awesome yeah so right now we have I think 11 with maybe eight of those or full-time something like that mm -hmm. um so one one thing that helped me well one you're you're not responsible for them and you know I think that's actually important to point out especially with the women entrepreneurs I see a lot of female entrepreneurs that think they're like the mommy of their employees and let people get away with just like the craziest stuff because they feel so bad for them and they want to help them out. And like the way that I always think of an employment relationship is that it has to be an even fair exchange that everybody feels good about. And it's not a complicated exchange. Like I give you money and you know, some other things like fulfillment and cool people to work with and a nice place to work, whatever. But basically I give you money <laughs> and in exchange, you provide your talents for my company. Like that's what's happening. And both of those things have to feel good, right? You have to feel like you're being fairly paid and fairly compensated. I have to feel like you're doing work that's that's worthy of the money. That's what hiring, you are not like their God. You are not their mom, <laughs> you know, if they, if they can't meet your needs for the company, then they go and you find someone who can, like, it, it's just, it, people make it way too emotional is <laughs> is what I find. Yes. So it's funny, I work as a coach and I've worked with, you know, large companies, 50 something employees. I'm like, you have to, you should have fired them a long time ago, like a long time ago. And then that happened to me and I was like, but, but she, you know, and she's got kids and I, yeah. <laughs> you know, 